Hello, my friends. My name is Irvin, also known as Kumbuma. Today, I'm going to talk about brief history of the internet. Um, as a teenager, I got my first computer when I was, uh, I'd say, about 15 or 16 in mid 1990s. So you can kind of guess how old I am right now. But the first computer was a Pentium and it had 266 megahertz and uh, a processor, I should say, and it had 16 megabytes of RAM. And of course. At, during those times, the only way to connect to the internet is via modem. So what is a uh, modem? And I'm not talking about a regular modem, I'm talking about a dial-up modem, right? These dial-up modems, you had to connect to your phone line. And through your phone line, you would use these modems. And here's an example of it. This is an external modem. This is an internal type of modem. You connect to your phone line and your modem itself dials a number that is con that connects to the server. The server uh, um, you know, based off your login preferences, allows you to connect to the internet. And this is how internet used to work in 1990s, right? So uh, let's have a look. Um, so there were two different types. Uh, there were uh, external and then internal, right? This is a typical external one. And uh, they connected either USB or serial port. Here's a, a newer, this is the newer version of ones uh, connected via USB port, right? And they were called a 56K modem. That's the maximum speed you can get on a dial-up modem, 56 kilobits. And we're going to compare the speeds and to what they actually translate to nowadays. And there were serial port ones, right? This is a serial connector and that connects to your computer. And that way you get, um, you know, internet speeds, a data bandwidth, if you will. Um, you guys probably, um, well, I'm sure mo most of my friends that are subscribed, and I definitely consider everybody my friend, um, uh, that subscribed you guys are probably familiar with this but somebody younger probably uh, probably may have never seen this type of connector right um, same thing same type of thing goes for this type of a slot this is isa slide i believe and don't don't quote me on that it's been such a long time since i've actually looked at this old technology but these type of slots don't no longer exist right and see you can, as you can see here there's a speaker on this dial-up modem and they make a distinct sound which is called a handshake right whenever you dial a server um, internet server through a connection you get what's a called a handshake and I'm gonna play this real quick so you guys can hear the dial-up and the noise it makes right and here's the modem dialing through your computer using software and this sound is actually called a handshake so let me kill that because it's kind of annoying but it kind of goes through as you can see here and then finally connects right um, the handshake is basically sends a your computer sends a synchronization request to the server and the server um, sends back acknowledgement so moving on um, these modems are connected at 56k um, maximum potential um, connection speed 56 kilobits right and most of the time you never actually got that speed uh, the, the fastest I've seen was 48 kilobits per second which is uh, you know, at the time was, you know, fairly fast. Unfortunately, when you use dial-up modems, you could not use your phone line. So nobody could call you. And remember, these were the times where not everybody had a cell phone. Cell phones were really expensive. Yes, definitely cell phones were around. People used them, this and that. But mostly people use pagers. And then you would basically get a page and then you would call somebody. But if you're using your internet, your phone line will be tied up, right? Another thing is, you cannot share, you could not share internet connection. Like for example, nowadays you connect to your um, internet and then you probably have a hub or a wireless um, setup and then you can connect multiple computers to the internet. That wasn't the case back then. You had to have two phone lines in order to have two people using um, you know, internet at the same time. However, um, as a young um, thinking, young thinking a protege if you will I, I wouldn't call myself protege or anything like that but as a young person that liked to um, you know play around with electronics uh, what i did um, in order to bypass the limitation of uh, you know having uh, just one person connect to the internet at the same time i went ahead and got one of these hubs these are one of those one of these really really old hubs and hub is different from a switch um, or a router it looks like a router. Let's have a look at this one. It was one of these kind of looked similar to this. It was like a white one. You know, let me do a little bit better picture. And all it did was it let you connect two computers to the same network, right? So 
but it didn't provide you with internet routing at all, right? It's totally different from your current routers or anything like that. It just lets you connect, you know, computers that are connected to these connectors to the same network. So here's a really good example. Um, in my case, I wanted to connect my computer. Let's say PC1 is my computer and my brother's computer, which is PC2, to the internet at the same time. So I got a hub and I connected both of them, right? I connected both of them. Now, these two computers could share information. So this is called the intranet, right? It's not called uh, internet because I don't have the external, um, I don't have a connection to the internet. At the time I did, there was just, it just wouldn't work. All I could do is share files between these two computers. It's called the intranet. In order to bypass that, I uh, set up on PC1, which is my computer, I went ahead and set up uh, a proxy connection um, that would all route um, my internet um, my internet connection back through the hub to my brother's computer, right? So I was able to share uh, internet connection, basically turning my computer into a router at the time so that he can connect to the internet at the same time. It was really slow for him, but it worked. You know, it was one of those things that I experimented with. And honestly, um, I kind of winged it because I, this, I just like, I owned the computer for about a year and a teenager and I was just experimenting with things but it was very very educational and I'll, I'll never forget it it was it was some some good good times right so let's go ahead and have a look at speeds of dial-up modems here I have a little uh, setup here in 1990s right um, if you had a 56k modem let's say you did connect um, at 56 kilobits per second this is equal to today's standards and I'm comparing it to megabits per second because nowadays internet is not going to be measured in kilobits per second right connection but as you can see um, where you saw earlier this is actually my own um, connection test for my own you know uh, internet connection at home right and you can see it's measured in megabits per second so let me go back to here if you look at here 56 kilobits per second is roughly well, well, it's exactly actually equal to, um, you know, 0 0.056 megabits per second connection. Now, in 2000s, when we got to the 2000s, um, DSL and cable broadband internet came along in USA. And the uh, I remember having this type of speed, which is 256 kilobits per second. And it was a huge, huge speed, you know, speed bump for me because as you can see here, it was equivalent to 0 0.256 megabits per second. And during those times, this was amazing speed. You know, this is something, you know, it, it was broadband and it was, it was just glorious because what I was looking at earlier before even in this, and, and like I said earlier, you actually, I've never ever seen anybody connect at these type of speeds. This is just a theoretical, top speed that you could connect using dial-up modems. Um, fast as I've seen was 48K. And uh, what I was looking into is actually getting a second line. There was a way to actually have two lines and two modems dial up at the same time to double this, essentially double the speed, which was, uh, <laughs> which was really expensive to have two phone lines. Anyways, moving on to 2010's um, internet speeds, right? So here's my speed right now and that's 134, 134 megabits connection, as you can see here. And that, for that time, um, and it would have been equivalent to, well, let's see, what is this? 134,610 kilobits per second. So uh, the internet speed has gone up quite a bit, as you can see, right? So. This is one of those kind of interesting things that I like to think about, uh, you know, w with my friends, you know, and, you know, this is just, I don't know, one of those personal experiences that are just kind of fascinated to think about, especially if you lived in these, uh, in this type of era where you remember having dial-up modems and, and how they worked and, and, and whatnot, you know. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a good one. Bye-bye.